Lincoln did not launch a military invasion of the South to free the slaves. No serious student of history could deny this fact. In 1861, Lincoln's position and the position of the Republican Party was that Southern slavery was secure. He had no intention of disturbing it, and even if he did, it would be unconstitutional to do so. This is what he said in his first inaugural address. The Republican Party, led by Lincoln, was in favor of Southern slavery because its leaders feared the spectacle of emancipated slaves residing in their own northern states. Lincoln's own state of Illinois had recently amended its constitution to prohibit the immigration of black people into the state, as had several other northern states. Most northern states had adopted black codes that discriminated in the most inhumane ways against freed blacks. Such discriminatory laws existed in the North decades before they were adopted in the South. There were very few blacks in the North in 1861, and most Northern voters wanted it to remain that way. As of 1861, Lincoln and the Republicans were opposed only to the extension of slavery into the new territories. One reason they gave for this opposition was that they wanted to preserve the territories as the exclusive domain of the white race. A second reason articulated by Lincoln was the desire to avoid the further artificial inflation of Southern, in other words, Democratic Party, representation in Congress that was created by the Three-Fifths Clause of the Constitution. The few abolitionists in the party undoubtedly believed that prohibiting slavery in the territories would quicken its overall demise. The reason Lincoln gave for launching a military invasion of the South was to save the Union, Translating from his obfuscating rhetoric, this means that he wanted to use military force to destroy once and for all the doctrines of federalism and states' rights that had, since the founding of the Republic, frustrated ambitious politicians like himself who wanted a highly centralized and greatly enlarged state. As we have seen in earlier chapters, Lincoln spent his entire 28-year political career prior to becoming president working in the trenches of the Whig and Republican parties on behalf of a more centralized government that would dispense taxpayer subsidies to corporations and finance them with protectionist tariffs and a nationalized banking system, the American system. The major opposition to such plans for some 70 years had come mostly from southern statesmen such as Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, Jackson, and Calhoun. The war ended the constitutional logjam behind which the old Whig economic policy agenda had languished for decades. It is more likely that the real reason why Lincoln decided that he had to wage war on the South and why he rebuffed any and all overtures from southern statesmen to peaceably end the dispute. He wanted a war.